guys welcome to today's episode i am super super excited to kick off my uh, december series vlogmas series with my brother george and this is his first time ever joining my youtube channel so it's a special one and um yeah today's topic is very very straightforward very up his, his alley he joined um uni recently so i just thought i must bring him on here he must share his experience how he's found it to date and hopefully this can be useful to you and without further ado i'll hand over to george to introduce yourself thank you so much for that introduction um, my name is george Budia, and uh i study at university of Manchester doing electrical and electronic engineering. Nice. Yeah. Huge, <laughs> huge course, triple E. <laughs> yeah, and really huge nice. congrats. I know you know I'm so proud of you. Huge congrats on um, doing the course of your dreams at a huge uni here in the UK. Um, yeah, and today is all about that experience, how you found your experience applying um starting university how your first semester has been um but before we get into the detail of it um if you can just walk us through like in terms of like just that process that you found um when you were applying for university how did you find it and maybe just walk us through that journey from george last year um when you're in year 13 to george right now who's a first year student at uni uh, okay so I did IGCSEs in year 11, so I used that route of A level. I know you had the foundation year one, mm -hmm. uh, but that's another topic. Yeah, but um, yeah, I did IGCS IGCSEs and uh, I enrolled in A level. Uh, so I applied through UCAS uh, using predicted grade. Um, yeah, so I heard the personal statement, chose the options. That I, that I wanted the insurance, form and insurance. It's always good to have the form and insurance. Um, yeah, so you you focus on on writing the personal statement, make, uh, showing your strengths, all your achievements, and um, yeah, uh, you'll be waiting to receive feedback um, around January to March is where the majority of universities give their offers, but yeah, some may give like in November. I think Bristol had given me an offer in uh, November, late November, so I'm going to be faster than, than others. Okay, so you went through, when did you make your application? Just if you give a bit of a timeline for people who may be, there could be someone in year 12 who's watching this, so they've not gone through the process, but what are the timelines for that application journey? If you can remember. Uh, actually, I applied in October. Mm -hmm. uh, so I wanted to apply early because I don't, I had an assumption that it would give the universities more time to do. I didn't want to leave it last minute. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so I applied in October. Uh, the offers, I got my last offer like in April. So yeah, you'll be waiting for maybe like six months to to receive all your offers if you use all your five chances. All right, all right. And yeah. had you used all your five choices when you applied? Yes. Oh, okay. my five choices. Yeah. Oh, that's great. So as you can hear, you, the you're able to even submit your application all the way from like October through I don't know. It's, it's January when the deadline is for. Yeah, January twenty fifth for my for my year. Yeah. Yeah, it's only certain courses like medicine that I believe you the deadline is a bit earlier. Um, and on that note, make sure to check out my UCAS video. I have a video where I cover the my tips on applying through UCAS because I also use the same route in terms of like, I think everyone in the UK, if you want to come to the UK undergraduate, you have to use UCAS. Um, but in my case, I didn't get to use for all the five choices. I use a very different route um, for foundation year. But Georgie went through the straightforward route of doing your it IGCSC and then A levels, um, and then you are able to apply to uni. Okay, so you submitted your applications, you got your offers through in April. So what was that experience during, um, I guess, exam time and after exams? If you can maybe give us a bit of a uh, insight into how you are feeling at that time, especially when it came to waiting for your results and getting to get that final offer from the uni. How was that? 
um for you yeah so of course you have your eyes on the some universities more than others so you you just focus on performing uh revising such you you get the results that you you had wanted in order to reach that get that uh unconditional offer which is given when the results are out um yeah but yeah when you when you're waiting for results it's really it's really not a good experience because you don't know what can happen um yeah but you just hope for the best uh you you did your best um so just um uh <laughs> be hopeful and now that you started uni, I'll just jump a little bit on now that you're already in uni, just because there's yeah. a little bit of a retro that we, you can do for us here, especially for um, year third candidates who um, this is you're in your candidate year and you're going through that tense period. Um, now that you've started uni, how do you feel about that whole uni selection process? Like, would you do anything different or what is it that you would advise someone who's going through that tense period right now, now that you're on the other side? Uh, yeah, so some tips about joining university um, and the university life. So for me, I, I didn't I didn't focus on, okay, over the summer after university, let's try and learn how to cook. So <laughs> me, I, 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 I didn't have good cooking skills, so because first month, first two months of it. A bit, uh, I had to learn to a steep learning, learning curve, but um, also try and plan your accommodation. I know it's hard to apply for accommodation if you don't have your results. Mm -hmm. so, but just try and um, if you if some, some universities allow booking with condition, so just check up with the university um, and see if because it's, it's good to secure your accommodation. If you leave it too late, you might be left with an accommodation that you're not happy with. Um, yeah, and just don't throw away your available resources once you're done. Because especially in engineering, the math and the physics parts are really useful. So don't just say, I'm done with available trying to throw away the books. At least, like, if the flashcards don't like keep all the books, but like the and the online resources as well that you had used. Ah, yeah, that's that's the stuff I say I could have done differently, and and uh, yeah, it would have helped me a lot at the start. So, just um, so that I make sure I, I got those points. So, it was mainly accommodation, like doing it early, also like mm -hmm. resources because there's some things you're learning now that. You, there's some material you had from a level that would have been yeah. great right um and then learning how oh because you spent because of course you only get to realize you need the cooking skills you realize yeah. when you're here that you could have probably done yeah. a bit more trial and error back home yeah right? I could have done more. Oh, okay. okay those are yeah. good tips. Yeah. yeah i guess that is a good segue into how have you found uni now how has it been because now you've done it's been what three months almost yeah. um since so yeah. how i guess maybe if you can start from when you got your confirmation from when you decided you're going to manchester you have your final offer because i know you had many options um not just even in the uk you had a, qu quite a couple of options but when you decided okay it is manchester to because it was i think it was quite a short period right between it is manchester and you starting how was that period from like I'd say August and September, if you can maybe touch on how that was and draw some tips for people who are, who it will be their case next year. Yeah. So, um, yeah, the visa application can only start once you receive the unconditional offer. So once you get the results, it's a really busy period because you need to prepare your documents and everything uh, to apply for the visa and uh, you need to go to your local um, tuberculosis um, testing center, but it has to be approved by the UK government. So yeah, just try and research to see where that is so that it's not uh, too chaotic. You can even do it earlier than you get your results. So such so once you get your results, you can straight and go, go through and, uh, and apply for the study permit. 
Um, yeah, so it was very chaotic from getting results to reaching Manchester. So, um, yeah, and the one thing I've seen um, is that in university, you need to manage your time a lot. Um, you might think that, okay, ah, this, this is free time, so um, let me not do anything productive, but um, you actually do need to be doing productive things. Um, such as uh, reading ahead for the lectures, uh, so that you don't fall behind or you absorb as, as much information in the lecture as possible. And um, yeah, just gen general life, you need to have that work ethic skills. Um, yeah, that's really important. So that's that's the main thing I've learned in these first three months. It's very important to have a good time management skills and. Uh, you know, good luck here, okay, nice and do you feel fully settled now now is can you say you're literally in the system now yeah yeah i would say i would say so still learning mm -hmm. but yeah i think now i have the gist of the university life so yeah is it what you were expecting uh no it's hard it's harder than you think it is it's harder than you think it is yeah so yeah um yeah so uh, with the cooking as i said you need to learn how to cook go get the groceries um yeah manage your time manage your your sleep schedule yeah everything is just uh, yeah i think now uh, i'm settled mm. yeah. nice so i guess then in terms of outside of school um just socially and personally rather um how have you found being away from family i mean we're in the same country but you were in completely different cities but how have you found being away because this i think is you've not been in boarding school or anything this is like your first time away from family how did you find that adjustment at first um yeah so yeah you, you might feel homesick after like a month staying here because yeah you're in a new country you can get culture shock um so my advice is just to integrate try try as best as possible to integrate with the culture by um having trying to network and like socialize more so like yeah so don't spend too much time in your room especially in freshers week because freshers week is when you, you can Everyone is social, everyone is ready to meet new people. So it's the easiest time to to make new friends from different countries and yeah, and learn their cultures, learn their that's how the society works. So like you can feel you can try and um adjust as fast as possible. Okay, thank you for that. And I guess as we wind up. Because um, I didn't want this to be too long because I'm pretty sure this is not the last time you'll be on my channel, putting you mm -hmm. on the spot. Um, but if you can give insight into someone who's really wondering what's a typical day in the life of an engineering student, how would you, can you just describe a typical day for you? Okay. So you might have a lab at 9 a.m. So make sure you sleep early the, 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 the day prior. Um, <laughs> yeah, so you need to, Get up, eat, rush for your lab. Um, you might be so this semester I've been doing like soldering uh PCBs and stylophones. So it's very interesting. So the lab is like three hours. Um, yeah, so you need you need to focus up for three hours. After that, you might have a lecture or with like a one hour break. So make sure you try and eat. Um. Yeah, try go for the lecture. Try as much as possible to understand what's going on. <laughs> Sometimes it can be hard. Um. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Then the, the lecture ranges from one hour to like two hours, so not too bad. Not too bad. Um. Yeah. Then after that, um, just make your way back to to the accommodation. Um. The walk is about twenty minutes for me, so. Yeah, it's quite a walk, but um, yeah, 
that's that's my day in my week. And I just unwind and try and get prepared for the next day. And you do like going to the gym as well. It's a, your way of unwinding. Yeah, yeah. You can get yourself involved in the gym. Um, some gyms, just check up with the university. Some gyms can have discounts um, in partnership with the university. So just try and take advantage of that. Nice. Thank you so much for that. And I guess as uh, what's your parting shot for someone who is about to experience the same journey that you've experienced there in their final year, um, or maybe even they took a gap year, so they're about to go to uni soon. Um, what's your parting shot to them? Um, you, 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 you'll be fine. You'll be fine. You might have some moments where you think everything is chaotic. You don't have control of many things, but um, yeah, yeah just keep pushing and there'll be, there'll be light on the other side. And also enjoy, be present. I know uh, university is, they say is one of the best years of your life. So yeah, just try and enjoy. Even though it might not seem like it's enjoyable, but just try your best to be social. Um, yeah, and you'll, you'll be fine. I can definitely reaffirm that it's the best chapter. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's a lot that comes with the other subsequent chapters, yeah. but I can go back to uni anytime. <laughs> <laughs> So definitely enjoy. And thank you so much. It was lovely to have you. And I look forward to us mm -hmm. having even a second. Like if you do have uh, suggestions, the audience, if you have suggestions on things I should cover with my brother, now that you know he's a student at uni, um, definitely put in the comment section. And yeah, I'll have my brother back sometime soon. Yeah. Thank you guys for having me. Bye. Bye.